Skyrim is a harsh land, with few having the luxury of education. It only makes sense that critical thinking may not be so high on the list of priorities when you have disease, predators, and harsh weather to worry about. That being said, some of Skyrim's residents go above and beyond in the idiot department, to the point where their stupidity becomes a danger to all. And today, we're going to be ranking all of Skyrim's idiots to see which is the greatest idiot of them all. Jarl Balgruf I like Balgruf as much as the next Dragonborn. His loyalty to his city, openness to other races, and generally helpful attitude makes him stand out among Skyrim's other Jarls. That being said, some of his decisions are a little questionable. Despite a civil war wreaking havoc across all corners of the province, Jarl Balgruf seems reluctant to do anything to defend his people. White Run's protection is laughable at best. The defenses outside of the walls amount to nothing but a single watchtower, and Riverwood doesn't even get stationed guards until a dragon prophecy comes underway. It might sound as bad as places like Morthal or Dawnstar, which don't even have walls to protect themselves. But unlike those cities, White Run is not aligned with either side of the war, making it one of the most valuable points of interest for both the Imperial Legion and the Stormcloaks. The fact that Whiterun is situated in the center of Skyrim only compounds its potential for attack. Worse still, once the war has ended, many of its homes, walls, and structures have been destroyed. Yet Balgruf does nothing to rebuild these structures. Does he like that his city looks like a war zone? Overall, Balgruf is a nice guy with whom I'd happily share some mead over a fire. But a competent leader? He is not. Number 12. Nazim Ah, Nazim, everyone's favorite target practice. You can't be the most universally hated character in Skyrim without being a little bit stupid. And Nazim is definitely more than a little stupid. Despite portraying himself as high nobility, the Red God spends his days walking around the market stalls of Whiterun, offering undue insults to the workers. Once the hard work of being a nuisance comes to an end, Nazim retires at the Drunken Huntsman before doing it all over again. And though he claims to be all buddy-buddy with the Jarl, he's never seen in Dragon's Reach or has anything to do with Whiterun's politics. But if he wants to be a part of Whiterun's nobility, one would think not to insult all of the city's residents. It's anyone's guess how someone with such little charm as Nazim managed to not only score a wife, but run a prosperous farm as well. In the end, Nazim is more embarrassingly stupid than dangerously stupid, so he's not going to be topping this list. But I would be lying if I said his attitude didn't make me quick save more than a few times. Number 11. Rolf Stonefist Racism is the thorn in the side of most Nords. While their strong will and hearty attitude are commendable, their knack for discriminating against anything that looks slightly different from what they're used to is a problem that's seen far and wide in Skyrim. But few are quite as passionate about their views as Rolf Stonefist. Rolf hates anyone that isn't a Nord, especially Argonians and Dunmer, or Greyskins as he likes to call them. His reasonings are about as thin as my patience for not sending him to the Soul Can. He claims that the Dark Elves are probably working with the Thalmor, since they're also Mare. On top of that, he alludes that non-Nords in Windhelm are lazy and do nothing to help the Stormcloaks in their rebellion. Yet, all we ever see Rolf doing is drinking away at the tavern and taking walks around the Great Quarter to spread his gospel to all that can hear. The only reason Rolf isn't higher on the list is because he was obviously written to be stupid, rather than having an absence of logic, like some of the other characters further down the list. Number 10. Black Briar Brothers While Maven is one of the most ruthless and intelligent characters you'll meet in Skyrim, her two sons are anything but that. Instead of following in the footsteps of their feared mother, the Black Briar Brothers opt for a life of pompous debauchery instead. Starting off, we have Sibby. This genius found his way into the Riften jail after taking the life of his lover's brother. Now, he spends his days rotting in his luxurious cell. All the while, Mummy does all the work to keep him off the executioner's block. Next, there's Hemming. The older of the two, Hemming likes to talk a lot with very little to show for it. Despite aspirations of expanding the Blackbriar business beyond Skyrim, Hemming shows zero initiative and seems to follow his mother's orders to a T. Altogether, both of these brothers spell doom for the Black Briar Empire. In fact, the only sibling that seems to have a head on their shoulders is Ingen, and she wants nothing to do with the business at all. So, it may have been a good run for Maven, but once she's gone, it seems her business is going with her. Number 9. Savos Arryn 
Archmage is the highest title that can be bestowed on a professor at the College of Winterhold. The title represents a group that is as respected as it is feared and holds enough pedigree to even pique the Thalmor's interest. So it's a damn shame that the title was given to someone as timid as Savos Aaron. Now, that's not to say that Savos is the dumbest character in the game. After all, he was able to imprison a dragon priest, which is badass by any standards. That being said, Savos Aaron's treatment of the Eye of Magnus and Ancano almost spelled the end of the college for good. Savos was warned multiple times of Ancano's suspicious activities by numerous members of the college, yet he's too meek to do anything about it. When it comes to fruition that Ancano doesn't have the college's best interest in mind, something nobody except for Savos was surprised by, the man just dies and leaves it to the more capable mages to finish the job. There is no universe where Savos should have been the Archmage. Sure, he might have been capable in his heyday, but he's clearly unfit to be the head of a mage's college. But the fact that this prestigious title was later given to the Dragonborn, the newest member of the group, makes you realize that no one else in the college is any better. Number 8. Ancano The only person dumber than Savos during the college debacle is Ancano. This Thalmor agent was sent by the Aldmeri Dominion in the guise of an advisor to the Archmage. But despite how he wanted to appear to the college, Ancano's true intentions were as a spy, gaining valuable knowledge for the Dominion's benefit. The only problem? Nobody was buying it. Well, nobody except for Savos, anyway. And why would they? Upon meeting him, Ancano can't help but point out how inferior the college's staff is to the Thalmor's mages. He's also seen everywhere around the college except by the Archmage's side. And when the time comes to confront Ancano on your suspicions, he acts flabbergasted, as if he wasn't alluding to it the whole time. At best, Ancano is a terrible spy, but things only get worse. When he attains the power of the Eye of Magnus, Ancano believes that he and he alone can use it to undo creation and fulfill the goal of the Aldmeri Dominion. You know, that goal that three different empires across a millennia couldn't achieve? And thanks to how the rest of the college is equally moronic, he almost achieves this as if it weren't for your intervention. As noble as his intentions may have been, at least by Aldmeri standards, Ancano ended up being a huge embarrassment to the Thalmor, possibly creating more distrust and animosity towards the Aldmeri Dominion than any other character before him. Number 7. Mercer Frey when you meet Mercer Frey for the first time, he might come off as a somewhat intelligent figure who has the Thieves' Guild's best interests in mind. But as you progress through the faction's questline, you learn that nothing could be further from the truth. It turns out that Mercer Frey is a moron that chose temporary riches in exchange for betraying his guild and Nocturnal. Breaking the honor among thieves is bad enough, but to go against a Daedric Prince made his selfish stupidity a danger to others. Considering that Nocturnal cursed the cow that was stolen from her for all the war it, it's only a miracle that the same wasn't done with the skeleton key that Mercer Frey stole. And even though nothing came about it, the risk he took and the friends he betrayed yielded nothing but his demise in the end. But for the sake of argument, let's just say he got away with all of it. What then? Was he going to continue living in his overpriced manor in Riften? Or was he going to spend the rest of his days turning over his shoulder to make sure a nightingale or thief wasn't going to exact their revenge? Overall, Mercer's plan is so poorly thought out that it makes Starfield's design documents read like an encyclopedia. Number 6. Thonar Silverblood What would you do when after years of fighting, you finally capture the leader of the dangerous Daedra worshippers known as the Forsworn? Most would just relieve him of his head and be done with it. But Thonar Silverblood is not like most people. He's much dumber than that. Instead of taking the sensible approach and being done with Madanak once and for all, he thought it would be better to keep him in Sidna Mine instead. There, Madanak is able to orchestrate attacks and continue pulling the strings of the Forsworn, all in the comfort of a first-class prison cell, complete with a bodyguard. All this needless effort leads to a potential Forsworn uprising, the result in the death of Thonar's wife, and Madanak, along with his entourage of agents, escaping prison. Well done, Thonar. Well done. Number 5. Mirak Considering Mirak has lived through four eras in a plane of oblivion known for its abundance of knowledge, you'd think the first Dragonborn would have developed some level of intelligence. But you'd be dead wrong. 
In his quest for power, Mirak chose to betray the dragon cult and bend the knee to Hermaeus Mora. Willingly bending the knee to Daedra is already a pretty bad idea, but his plans only get worse during the Dragon War. There, Mirak was asked to ally with the Atmorans in their battle against Alduin and the dragon cult. Instead of accepting the free help, Mirak refused and created a rebellion of his own. This rebellion ended as quickly as it began, with him being defeated by another dragon priest. Only with Hermaeus Mora's help was he able to escape death and return to Apocrypha. Considering how terribly his previous betrayal turned out for him, being defeated by a random priest and left imprisoned in Hermaeus Mora's realm, Mirak's arrogance is stifling when you realize he's now plotting against his Daedric master. Mirak's plan to thwart Hermaeus Mora is laughable at best. After all, Mirak only became a servant to the Prince of Knowledge after going behind the back of the Dragon Cult. So, believing that he could do the same to a being as intelligent as Hermaeus without their knowledge is comically low IQ. In the end, Mirak's history is nothing more than a lifetime of failure. Despite every opportunity to do otherwise, the man insists on shooting himself in the leg with his arrogance and half assed ideas. Number 4. Delphine Delphine has a heart in the right place. She's loyal to the Blades, so much so that she'd go against the White Gold Concordat and continue a mission of guarding and guiding the Dragonborn. But of all the Blades in Tamriel that ended up surviving, Delphine is one of the worst candidates imaginable. First off, she's terrible at her job. Instead of fulfilling her duties as the Dragonborn's protector, she orders you around like some form of authority, while also constantly putting you in harm's way without any help. Next, she's a bit of a conspiracy theorist who's hell-bent on the idea that the Thalmor has something to do with the Dragon Crisis. This leads you on an entire infiltration mission that would have been for nothing if the Thalmor weren't so careless with where they place dossiers. But worst of all is her unwillingness to see Parthenax as an ally to humans. Parthenax helps the Dragonborn many times during the Dragon Crisis, teaching you powerful shouts, aiding you in finding the Elder Scroll, and even being on the sidelines during your first fight with Alduin. But in spite of this, and the fact that he taught non-Dragonborn the way of the voice in the first place, Delphine is blind to the idea of Parthenax being reformed from actions he committed thousands of years ago. I may be able to tolerate being bad at your job and righteously believing in unfair conspiracies, but when you're asking me to kill one of the most valuable potential assets the Blades could have, that's where I draw the line. Number 3. Harkon it Turns out that mixing the thick-headedness of Nords with the vampiric hatred of the sun is a recipe for really, really stupid plans. Between Alduin, Mirak, and Harkon, the latter is easily the dumbest of them all, as his grand plan amounts to nothing more than blocking out the sun. If he were to consider only for a second what kind of repercussions that would cause for the world, then he'd back out of such a moronic idea immediately. Without the sun, plants wouldn't be able to grow, which kills all animals relying on plant life, including all humans. And without humans, there are no more vampires. Even if you consider that Harkon had other means of survival, like feeding off Falma, the motivation is still idiotic. Sure, boiling blood sounds like it would be a little painful, but is it bad enough to destroy the planet and sacrifice your family in the process? Maybe for a crazed madman, but not for me. Number 2. Astrid You have to give Astrid some credit. Despite the Dark Brotherhood being in shambles across Tamriel, she's managed to keep a tight-knit community of assassins amid civil war. She also exudes a level of skill that is admirable, especially upon first meeting her. But her stupidity and arrogance slowly heats up throughout the questline until it reaches its boiling point in her decision to sell out the Dragonborn. Successful contract after successful contract makes the Dragonborn change the tide of the organization, bringing them out of the grave and back into the fray. Yet all Astrid sees is competition and change. Her fragile ego leads her to sell the Dragonborn out to Commander Maro, foolishly believing that he would cooperate with his sworn enemies. Unsurprisingly, Maro doesn't hold up his end of the bargain and decides to attack the Sanctuary anyway, leading to the Dark Brotherhood being in an even worse position than it was before you arrived. All in all, the first impression we had of Astrid was a confident and skilled assassin. By the end of the questline, however, we can see that she's nothing more than a child. Number 1. Ulfric Stormcloak I can already hear the Stormcloak loyalists abusing their keyboards in the comments, but it's time you heard that Ulfric is not just a moron, 
but the biggest and most harmful moron in Skyrim. Ulfric's reasoning for starting the civil war can be boiled down to a distaste for the Empire and an infatuation with Talos. However, his timing is what truly stands out. Ulfric began his skirmishes against the Empire and the Reachmen during a time when a united Empire was most needed. This has led many to theorize that Ulfric is actually a Thalmor agent who was ordered to fight the Empire to further weaken their control. But if you ask me, Ulfric is just a brash Nord who can't see anything beyond what's directly in front of him. His rebellion has not only divided the Empire, but Skyrim too, and left many of her people to die prematurely for the sake of some Jarl's power trip. And whether he can see his strings or not, Ulfric is undoubtedly a puppet for the Aldmeri Dominion. Whatever his intentions may be, removing more power from the Empire only benefits the Dominion. I don't know about you, but anything that benefits the Thalmor is a bad thing in my book. Subscribe to fall damage, you milk drinker.